Hey, Richard Miller here. You know, I'm with that blog, uh, Facts Working People. I, I just want to make a couple of comments about this. It was sort of interesting. I, I like Peggy Noonan's writing. She has a regular column in the Wall Street Journal on Saturdays. Uh, she, I don't agree with her politically, but I've always admired her writings. And she's an important, um, respected, uh, uh, she was a speechwriter for Reagan. She's an important, respected uh, theoretician of old, the old conservative Republican uh, 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 bourgeois in this country and um, she writes very well as I say we don't have to agree with her but in this the last Saturday she wrote uh, um, uh, the title was The Enduring Lessons of the Cuban Missile Crisis and you can see when you read that the reason I read this paper and papers of the bourgeois then I'm not talking about the mass papers that's for us I'm talking about the in the papers that they write for themselves there's, they're, they're more honest and truthful in them. You can see in reading this article, and it's a picture of Kennedy, and she talks about how JFK came to understand the need to be disciplined in self-restraint. He said this in a 1963 speech. And why is she writing this? She goes on, uh, that she's talking about um, when, when, when the Russians put missiles in Cuba. She said, uh, JFK asked why the Russians would do this. And then she said that General Maxwell Taylor suggested uh, it might be that Nikita Khrushchev lives under the fear of nuclear weapons in Turkey, which they had, the U.S. has always had, and wants us to taste the same anxiety. Uh, it's a very good, that was the answer to Kennedy when he said, why would they do that? Why would they put nuclear weapons in Cuba? It's obvious what the response would be. I remember that very well. All people of my age, I lived near an American air base. We were all worried we may be bombed by the Russians. Um, so she goes on that there was a discussion with Kennedy. It's made me think about Kennedy a little more. He taped, uh, she points out in this article that he taped, he taped all, uh, secretly taped all the discussions he had. You could see he was not trusting of the folks around him. And um, in those days, it was big to have a Catholic president. He was not trusting of those around him. And of course, you know, they, it, it, some of them uh, obviously uh, didn't trust him at all. And that's why he's dead. So you can hear, she says, you can hear the tension in the voice and everything else. She says, he secretly taped the de deliberations as he taped many conversations. And, uh, and so then she said that, well, Kennedy then spoke to Macmillan, the British Prime Minister. And, and Macmillan said it might encourage the Soviets. He said, what could we do? Uh, uh, how, how, can we, how should we deal with this? And uh, he called Macmillan, and the, uh, Macmillan said it might encourage the Soviets to withdraw the weapons if actions were taken to help, quote, to, quote, help the Russians save face. Makes common sense. And then he said, uh, Macmillan said to Kennedy, well, you know what, we could offer to, quote, immobilize our Thor missiles here in England. Because there were all many demonstrations when I was young. I wasn't as political then in England and Scotland against Trident missiles and and, 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 and keep the Yanks out of Britain. Because we, my dad used to say we're an aircraft carrier for the Yanks. We'll, we'll be the first ones bomb. So that was that was some sensible advice from, um, uh, uh, from, from Macmillan. And um, so anyway, in the end, she says, uh, Khrushchev withdrew the missiles. JFK, who had previously admitted to him that the Bay of Pigs was a mistake, repeated a promise, quote, not to inv quote in Noonan, not to invade Cuba. He secretly promised, too, that the U.S. would get its missiles out of Turkey. So, so uh, this, is what she, the, this is what he promised Khrushchev. Then she says, the story doesn't end there. Eight months later, in 63, Kennedy gave a speech in which he described how the crisis had convinced him that the entire Cold War must be rethought. And so, so Kennedy was very worried about the conflict, the nuclear conflict. Uh, uh, and he's, Kennedy goes on, quote, a single nuclear weapon contains almost 10 times the explosive force delivered by all the Allied air forces in the Second World War. A major nuclear exchange could cons extinguish the world. It's a very interesting article. She's very, very, it, it reflects something here, and I'll end with it. But um, he said, uh, uh, he said th uh, this, uh, he, he, Kennedy goes on, she quotes him, In the final al analysis, our most basic common link is that we all inhabit this small planet. We all breathe the same air. We all cherish our children's future and we are all mortal. And then he goes on, Above all, while defending our own vital interests, nuclear powers must avert those confrontations which bring an adversary to a choice of either a humiliating retreat or a nuclear war. A collective wish for the world 
that that's what he was talking about. It would be evidence of a collective uh, a de death wish for the world, and that's what Russia. That's the position Russia's in right now, and that's uh, and those that refuse to accept that yes, it's t we have to condemn Putin. Yes, we have to condemn the brutality. We know what Russia is. It's an imperial country, in my view. It's a weaker imperialist country. It's like a backward country with nuclear weapons in some ways, and they went through that brutal. Uh, uh, a privatization in the 1990s. I was in Germany in 1999, and people were telling me that the borders between Czechoslovakia, between Poland and Russia, uh, and Russia, and some of the Eastern European countries in Russia, there was just massive women being trafficked, women trying to escape. It, it, it was brutal what went went on in the 90s. And we have to remember that the Nazis uh, 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 invaded Russia, Napoleon invaded Russia, Russia lost 15 million people in the Second World War, I think 20 million, something like that. So she's, so she's concerned, uh, she's, a, she's a, an astute thinker, she's, she's concerned about capitalism and its survival, and she says, uh, uh, and she says there about the, that um, uh, 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 you can see the humiliating retreat. This is the what they're boxing, what they're pushing uh, the Russians into, and um, and then she she goes on to quote Kennedy. That is why the U.S. military forces are disciplined in self-restraint. Well, that mean, may have been the case then. It's not now. It's not since 911, since it, Grenada, since uh, Iraq, since Afghanistan, since Yemen and so forth. Self-restraint, that, that doesn't apply. Uh, I never read fully David Halbertson's book, The Best and the Brightest, but it makes me want to go back and try that one again. And then he says, and that's why our diplomats are, quote, this is Kennedy, instructed to avoid unnecessary irritants and purely rhetorical hostility. And that's exactly what we, we have ex that exactly now. You have a situation, like it or not, where the NATO, which is an offensive weaponry, is offensive force, it's not a defensive force, where, what, uh, what was it doing in Afghanistan, North Atlantic Treaty Organization? There's no Atlantic uh, Ocean in Afghanistan, or near it. And so, you've, you've got the, uh, the US, really, is who it is, has got uh, missiles and, uh, and offensive weapons surrounding Russia. It was inevitable that at some point, and then you had the war in, in, in Macedonia, the war in Yugoslavia, uh, which was NATO-driven, and the, the, they say, well, this is the first war in the Ukraine. No, the U.S. bombed Yugoslavia. I was there. I was in Macedonia right after that, uh, 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 um, visiting a friend. And so, so you've, that's the situation. To deny that there's any provocation is, is just abject it's just stupidity and insanity and there's a real danger here she recognizes it this is not some lunatic she's a very astute bourgeois politician and theoretician should i say and 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 um and when she she mentions what there's a reason she quoted kennedy here our diplomats quote instructed to avoid unnecessary irritants and purely rhetorical hostility what the hell was pelosi doing in taiwan what was there to be gained? Firstly, there's nothing to be gained for the working class in the Ukraine war, in any of these squabbles between imperialist countries, between capitalist countries and governments. There's nothing. That, 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 uh, none of that is of our interest, especially between these big powers. Pelosi going to t Taiwan is simply provo pr provocation. She's prov provoking. There was nothing to be gained in this. And then you've got these other U.S. politicians going over there. This is dangerous business. The, the, Taiwan is a red line for China. It's a red line that shouldn't be crossed. And not only that, the, whether or not it's part of China, they believe it is. The U.S. The US ex has accepted it's a part of China and a province of China. The nationalists fled there after the revolution. Chiang Kai-shek, there was a, a dictatorship there for 40-odd years. And, uh, and now you've got what you've got there. Like it or not, that's what they believe. And, and how that's uh, uh, decided is between the Chinese and the Taiwanese working class. Pelosi is nothing but a 83-year-old uh, demented bourgeois. You know, and we should condemn what she's done here and what the Democrats are doing here and what Biden is doing here, Biden the warmonger. Somebody I saw, uh, I don't watch him very often, but he's funny at times, Maher. And they had some woman there that was a speechwriter or something for Clinton. And she's talking about how, well, people love old Biden because it was when, he was when the Democratic Party was the party of working men and women. It's never been the party of working men and women. It's a capitalist party. 
It's the most powerful party in the world. It's the mo it was the only party in the world in the history of humanity that dropped nuclear weapons on civil uh, urban uh, on urban centres. That's what the Democratic Party was. Is it was it's the only. People may not agree with me here, it, it, but in my view, it was why it, why it has the that left wing of it that g d draws in the trade union leadership, marginalised people, and environmentalists, and so forth. There's not much else. We no no not not no other place to go. Is that it was in power during the two most powerful movements of the working class in this country in the 19th in the 20th century, the the rise of the CIO and the the civil rights movement, and it was forced to make concessions on both those in both those. Uh, 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 uprisings, uh, class uprisings, huge class uprisings. The civil rights movement embarrassed them throughout the world. So anyway, that, that's uh, it's in last last uh, Saturday's um, October the first, second. Peggy Noonan's uh, uh, column. It's very informative. It shows that they're really concerned. The more astute, the more serious sections of the U.S. bourgeois are concerned about the developments here, and so should we be. And so, anyway, I just wanted to uh, to share that. That's my, that's what I draw from this um, article of hers in last week's um, Wall Street Journal. And um, if you like this, if it's on YouTube, could you like it and share it? If it's on Facebook, could you like it and share it? And feel free to comment. All right, thanks a lot, Richard Menor. Facts for working people. Our blog's URL is we know what's up. Blogspot. Com. No apostrophes.